In this video, we're going to look at the difference between liquidity and volatility. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. Hope your trading and investing is going well. All right, so difference between liquidity and volatility. Sometimes these are confused, but they're distinctly different things. However, they do kind of combine and mesh and cause the same kind of outcome potentially. There's a lot of crossover, a lot of synergy, but they are two distinct separate things. So let's look at them, let's define them. Let's use, let's use my kind of definition of them. I've not gone down the textbook route because you can all Google and you can all do stuff and go and look for yourselves what Investopedia say or what uh, Wikipedia says and what the actual definition of stuff is. This is my opinion and view on liquidity and volatility from a short-term trader's perspective. All right, so let's look at liquidity first. So liquidity is the depth of the orders. What do I mean by that? So if we see, imagine an order book, and by the way, if you're subscribing, you may well have seen a video where I've gone into a lot more depth, no pun intended, about the market depth, where I've dug right down into how price changes and stuff. So go and check that out if you haven't already. But that is basically saying to us, okay, how many orders are resting in the book in terms of liquidity? So if we're looking at an order book for S&P 500, we might f sign, for example, a thousand contracts, 2000 contracts, a thousand contracts at each individual price level, each tick that goes lower. So if someone sells a hundred contracts into that, it's not gonna move price. If they sold 3000, it would move price one tick down. It would take the first one and then it would take the rest of the out of the second layer, layer and leave a little bit left. Now, if you look at something like crude oil, you might have on the near futures contract, maybe 10 contracts, 20, five, two. So it is a distinct difference in liquidity. Now I know there's a difference in size, there's a difference in contract size, and it's the same with stocks as well. If you look like, like an Apple stock, for example, then you look at perhaps a cannabis stock, the difference in liquidity there, liquidity there i.e. the thickness the order book, how much stock is all in the order book ready to be filled on both buy and sell side, distinctly different. The same seller coming in and selling 100,000 shares of stock in Apple is probably not going to move the price that much. 100,000 shares of a cannabis stock may well move that thing 15, 16%, assuming no circuit breakers. So liquidity is all about how much is available to trade, how liquid an instrument is, how much we can scoop out the market in one go, so to speak. So Forex, very, very liquid, massive market. You go out and buy euros, you can probably buy as much as you like within reason. Um, you know, if you start going big boy levels, then you're gonna move it a little bit, but you know, a couple of million quid very easily, if not 100 million, very easily, if not more. Um, but you can see the difference. So let's look at it a little bit further. So it's the ability to execute with no or little slippage. Now, this is my definition in terms of, okay, if I want to go and buy something immediately with a reasonable amount of size, the, the liquidity will determine how much I'll move price. And we know that when we, can we still see that on the board? We can. Let's say we're buying here, we've got a price here, we've got another price level here, 100.1. Uh, when we move price let's go 99 when we take out these levels if we're buying at market we're buying everything at 99 everything at 100 we're buying a little bit 100.1 that's what moves price now if this is very liquid i.e very very thick with liquidity me coming in and buying isn't going to move price it's just going to stay there it's going to soak up all I've got to offer because I'm not a big player so the ability to execute with little or no slippage means that it's liquid, it's thick, it can take decent size without moving the market. And that's that's the key to liquidity. So no, number number three here, guys, well, I'm, I'm at number three, but it's the third one. Uh, market orders move price less in high liquidity environments. So just like I alluded to earlier with the S&P 500, you've got big thickness of orders in the order book. In other words, someone coming in, buying a big batch isn't gonna move price much. Someone coming and buying a big batch of crude oil may well move price way more. It will do if they're buying the same amount, they're buying 2,000 contracts in crude oil at one clip. Uh, they're probably going to get a horrible fill. They're going to get slippage because they're going to get executed at multiple levels. So their average is going to be five or six levels or high, if not 10 ticks high, whereas S&P 500 will just be one tick. So that's point two. But point three, market orders move price less. Means that if you're coming with a market order, i.e. you've got no regard for price, the difference between the market order and limit order is market order. You don't care about price. You just want in now. You're very, very time sensitive. You're not price sensitive. Limit order is you're very, very price sensitive but you're not time sensitive. So market order, I want in now, want out now, that won't move the market as much because the liquidity is there to soak up 
all that order flow in. If you have a less liquid market and got people firing in market orders, that's what happens uh, in crashes, in that flat, in the flash crash, in dangerous environments, in thin stocks, all this kind of stuff. It moves the market quickly because everyone's trying to execute in an urgent manner and there isn't the opposing side of the trade to soak that up. It has to go through four or five different price levels to get the fill. And if you magnify that by how many people are getting involved, then you start to get price moves. And this moves very nicely, guys, into the biggest danger for extreme moves. Flash crash, and I think this is the biggest danger for potential crashes in the market in the future, is a lack of liquidity. The algos now are programmed to pull the rug on any order flow liquidity at the first smell of danger. We saw that in the flash crash. It got it kind of exaggerated. The market went down, liquidity got sucked. They were trying to then go on the other side of the book to get out of the positions that were bad. Liquidity was dried up. There were no buyers to soak up those sales. And when you've got no buyers to soak up those sales, bang, the price gets hammered to the downside. And the same for the upside. So liquidity, very, very important for keeping market structure, for keeping uh, the, having the ability for people to execute execute and get out reasonably quickly in a reasonable size uh, without moving the market too much. Of course, that's what moves the market, so we're never going to stop that completely. That's how market finds its equilibrium and price point. But extreme moves generally caused by a lack of liquidity. Uh, and as I put in the final one, as low liquidity can equal higher volatility, as we saw in the flash crash, which leads us nicely to what is volatility? We've looked at liquidity, let's look at volatility. So volatility in a real simplified term is how big the moves are. In other words, you know, we've got a price that's doing this, or we've got a price that's doing that. The price that's got the bigger movement is considered more volatile in terms of percentage move, in terms of ticks moves, uh, whatever it may be, base point moves, however you're trying to measure that. Also the speed of the moves, this isn't really official, but for me, matters how quickly something happens. It could go, a price could go from up 10%. If it goes 10% in um, a year versus 10% in a day, when obviously the more volatile is the one that does it in a day. So how quickly and the length and size of the moves. In other words, are we going 10%, are we going 20%? And also, you know, how quickly it's doing that. The quicker it does it and the larger it does it, the more volatile we can see. If you see something's you know, ripping up and down 10% in a day, extremely volatile, something that's going up 0.1% a day or down 0.1% a day, uh, very low volatility. Now, obviously, we've got to benchmark that against history. So we're not going to see a currency pair doing 10% a day regularly. We have seen stuff like that before in the past, but we're not going to see the euro moving 10% uh, in a day, but we might see a small cap stock moving 10% a day. That would be the normal move for it. So even though we say that's volatile, perhaps it's not on its base mark, or maybe it starts moving 50% a day, that's now volatile. Whereas the euro, if the euro starts moving 2% a day, that could be considered volatile. So it's all about you know benchmarking it against previous uh, kind of moves as well. But we can also you know compare volatility with different instruments. So by the way, a rapid change in direction. Uh, for me, if a price is changing direction quickly, sharply, and in a short amount of time, that is volatile. And the final one here for me, guys, is expected volatility is how much price is anticipated to move. So this is used with options pricing, expected volatility, how much that actual instrument is expected to move over a period of time. That's the expected volatility. The higher the volatility, the more expensive generally an option is going to be. So for example, if we have expected volatility over earnings, earnings period for stocks is going to influence the stock price. Good earnings, generally stock price will go up, bad earnings, stock price will go down. Simplifying it, not always the case, but generally speaking. So we have a volatility expectation of, hey, this stock might move up or down 8% on earnings day, depending on what the earnings come out. No one knows what the earnings are gonna be, but we expect that's the reaction. So that's what expected volatility is. So you can see, guys, two distinct differences. One can cause the other. You know, high volatility can mean a lack of liquidity. People don't want to put so many orders in. And because of the price is changing so much, people don't have time to layer up orders. If you have something that's changing price very, very a small amount, then you're going to have high order flow stacked up, big volumes of orders. If there's massive changes in price, liquidity might well be low and vice versa. If liquidity is low, then we could have a big change in price because a lot of people are trying to execute at the same time, giving us a high volatility. So chicken and egg, but they do go hand in hand from time to time. Anyways, liquidity and volatility. Take care. See you next one. Bye-bye.